Hi, this is Matt from Novation. Uh, today we're going to run through the promo that we originally did for the Launchpad uh, in use with Ableton Live, of course. So uh, today we're just going to show how to rebuild that, that promo session. There's a lot of people have been asking uh, how, how it was done. So let's start. First of all, we're going to add some loops uh, into our Ableton session. So I'm going to go to my browser here. And uh, basically there was five fundamental loops and one drum track that made up the promo. So let's drag those in one at a time and then trigger them using the launch pad. So that, of course, is the trumpet sample. And we'll add a bass, a keyboard part, and two synth lines. And we'll play those now. This is the bass. This is the keyboard part. Uh, one of the synth lines. And another one of the synth parts. Now notice I'm using the empty clips to stop each one of those when they're playing. But pretty much if I play all of those at the same time, that's kind of most of the track there. Okay. So now what we need to do is build up a drum track. So we do that by uh, instantiating a drum rack in Ableton Live. Now here's one I prepared earlier. Uh, what I've done here is, uh, if I go to user one mode, is put that channel in record arm as you can see here. And when I play the pads in user one mode, we'll eventually get some sounds. So if I play uh, where those parts are, I know that here's always a kick drum, there's a snare, some hi-hats, and those are replicated up here in a slightly different sounding kit. So we've got four kits, kit one, kit two, kit three, and kit four. It's a bit hard to see at the moment when the LEDs aren't coming back uh, to show you when you pressed a note. So I'm going to show you a trick now to get LED feedback in user one mode. So in Ableton Live, we create a MIDI track. And I'm going to drag this to the end here. And I'm going to call it LED feedback. So what I want to do is take the MIDI data that comes out of this drum track here, feeds it into the LED feedback track, and then back out to the launch pad. Uh, so making sure that the I.O. tab is selected, I select MIDI in from the drum track, which is our track one, and then route the audio out to Launchpad. And one last thing I need to do is select Monitor to always monitor the input to that channel. Now when I play the drums in user one mode, we should get lights. Like that. There is one additional trick that we need to do, um, and you'll see why this is used later, but we need to be able to turn the LED feedback on and off when we switch between modes. And I do this using the MIDI Learn tab in Ableton, and I will click on the Mute button for that uh, channel, and I'm going to assign it to the bottommost rhymed button on the launch pad, uh, because it's usually, usually free. Uh, we'll then e exit MIDI Learn mode, and now I can turn that uh, mute on and off. And when I play tracks, you'll see LEDs coming on and off. OK, let's play some drums and record them like we did on the, uh, the promo. So I'm going to go back to uh, session mode and turn the click on, because I need to be able to play in time. Uh, well, hopefully in this case. So let's record four empty clips, each one of a bar in length. OK, now that second one wasn't a bar in length, so I'm going to delete it and do it again. One, two, three, four. OK. Now, on their own, they don't sound that great, so let's fill them with some drums by going back to user one mode. Now, I played that a little bit poorly, so let's put that back in again. OK, so now we've recorded a drum part. Uh, and you can see the lights coming back. And uh, where all of that actually is, is in this clip here. So it's a bit of a hassle sometimes having to go between user one and session mode when you want to just do a, a, a performance by playing lots of drums. So I'm actually going to learn these four clips into user one mode onto these buttons down here uh, to save me having to switch modes all the time. So I'll use the MIDI learn button and in Ableton click on the first clip and assign it to this button the second clip to that button, and so on. And now it would seem as if there's something already assigned to that, but I'm sure that's fine. And we exit MIDI learn mode. So now I can trigger that loop 
in user one mode without having to switch back to session mode. So let's fill this second clip with some drums as well. And the third clip. Okay, so now we've built up the drum track like we did on the original recording. The next thing we need to do is add some effects to make it um, uh, to make it sound better at certain sections and also just to um, yeah just to mash it up pretty much. So the first effects we're going to put on are some uh, some distortion sounds. So here's a saturator plugin I've added earlier. There's some delays, flanger and another kind of distortion um, sound. Again, using MIDI Learn, I'm going to map them to these buttons on the launch pad. So let's do that now. Learn to this button, learn to this button, learn to this button, and so on. So let's give that a go. OK. So we're starting to build up um, the effect that we had on the original. There's one last effect we want to put on, which is my favourite, which is the beat repeater uh, in Ableton. So I've put three beat repeaters here, um, just after those effects in the drum channel, and I'm going to learn those to the top four buttons, actually the top three buttons on the launch pad. So again, MIDI learn, click on the on-off for that particular device, and then click on the corresponding buttons on the launch pad. So you can see how easy it is to learn buttons. On, on the product. So let's give that a go. Okay, you get the idea. So let's add all of that together and um, play around with the drums. Okay, so that's how we, uh, we build up the drum track. So if we go back to our session mode now, now when I go back to session mode from user one, I'm going to turn the LED feedback off. That stops all of the lights coming on in the session mode. Um, and that's why I've done that particular um, LED feedback muting. So let's build up the original um, uh, like this. And there you have it. That's how to recreate the Launchpad promo. You can download the session for this uh, from our website uh, following the link which you'll now see on screen.